performance, I'd like to uh, look it up. Janet and John. Everybody have a for Janet and John. Setting up a plugin for a for a uh, for his guitar. So I thought I would show. Which is cool. You would share how to destroy the music. How do I destroy equipment? Oh yeah. It doesn't matter to me. But thank you very much, and I hope I'm going to be going over, and I hope she doesn't kill me for that. But I will start while he's setting up. Do you need this? Sean. No. I will start with uh, the only Christmas-themed poem that I have, and it's not a very pleasant one. But I'm a Chicagoan, and I just moved here a couple of years ago. And this is an older piece of mine that was actually put on television in Nashville, I believe. And uh, it is called Christmas Eve. We made dinner, fettuccine alfredo, with chicken and duck, vegetables, bread. We ate, we couldn't finish everything. We were putting on our coats, getting ready to go to midnight mass. I decided to pack up our leftovers, give them to some homeless people on the main street. We got in the car and drove to Broadway and Berwyn. I got out of the car, walked over to a man there, asked him if he was hungry. You put that beam in your house. I got the bowl of noodles and the gallon of milk out of the car. Uh, another man walked over to me. I told them to promise that they would share. I got in the car. We were just driving, and all I could think was these two men were in the cold, eating pasta with their fingers on Christmas Eve. don't work out for people and you just try to do something and then you realize that wasn't enough, you know, like, right? You don't know what you're doing, right? <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't bring you plastic spoons, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> it's a piece of mine, anyway. Pardon me? Ask them. They say, they say yes. Then I'm going to talk a little bit. Um, this is literally last Christmas. Um, one person I believe heard me perform this at Kick Butt Coffee a couple weeks ago, but literally last Christmas, um, the musician George Michael died in his bed on yes. Christmas morning. They found him, and a year went early in his career. He did a song called Last Christmas, and I think it was on his last Wham album or something, but just in an effort to try to be happy, even though the theme of the song may not be happy, I thought I would share this George Michael Wham song of his called Last Christmas. And thank you in advance early for John, you're awesome. This is Last Christmas. <laughs> Christmas, gave you my hand, but the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I give it to someone special. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart, but the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I give it to someone special. Once bitten and twice shy, I keep my distance, but you still catch my eye. Tell me, baby, did 
do you recognize me? Well, what you're gonna hear doesn't surprise me. Happy Christmas. I wrapped it up and sent it in a note saying I love you, I meant it. Now I know what a fool I've been. But if you kiss me now, I know you'd fool me again. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. But the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save it from tears, I give it to someone special. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. But the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I give it to someone special. That's you. Oh. A crowded room of friends with tired eyes. I'm hiding from you and your soul eyes. I got a thought you were someone to rely on me. I guess I was a shoulder to cry on. A face on a lover with a fire in his eyes. A man undercover, but you tore me apart. Last Christmas I gave you my heart, but the very next day you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I give it to someone special. Last Christmas I gave you my heart. I'll give it to someone, I'll give it to someone now Who'll give me something in return You broke my heart and watched it burn I'll give it to someone, I'll give it to someone Last Christmas I gave you my heart at the Baha'i Faith Center final performance just a couple of weeks ago and I had written things about traveling around the country and I want to share this one with you and thank you all very much again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is called Visiting Pristine Places on the Planet. Wait a minute, first things first. Give it up for John. Please, give it up. Thank you very much. No, no you need it. I should do that. You're awesome. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, this poem called Visiting Pristine Places on the Planet. When I was young, the world was the size of a thimble, and all I needed was my own backyard. But on my own, I was a dot in the universe, and that had a change. So after trying to climb one of the Alps wearing socks and sandals, I went to a nearby mountain to spend 20 minutes in this radon-filled cave to try to gain my strength again. After reading Hitler's concentration camp gates in Dachau, Arbeit Max Frei, I walked through those gates and thought, work will set you free. Yes, it's true. I know it. Because your choice and your drive is freedom. After singing an entire acoustic set in a bar in Fairbanks, Alaska, we took off after midnight, added extra layers of clothes, and we stood outside in the cold to bask in the geomagnetic dances of the aurora borealis. 
After being stared at by men in India because I was a tall Western woman not dressed like a Muslim, I had to go to their iron-filled, human feces-filled Bay of Bengal just to get my feet wet. <laughs> After stepping over gold-covered risers and palaces in China's Forbidden City, an older Chinese man asked me in halted English where I was from. When I said Chicago, he joyously said, my kind of town. <laughs> After I sang at the Great Wall of China, a group of Chinese people asked me to take a picture with them, but I don't think it was my singing, but the fact that I was at least a foot taller than all of them. <laughs> After buying a balalika in St. Petersburg, I saw an alarming number of well-armed Russian guards at every street corner. And I thought, we will never be friends, but at times like these, We'll try to be friendly. After retracing Darwin's steps at the Galapagos Islands, I stopped near the crisscrossed, overlapping sea lions napping so I could contemplate natural selection. After seeing destroyed British ships from early whaling in Antarctica, I photographed the first humpback whales of the season, then took pictures of the Gen 2 pex, the penguin as, as it was in the distance, and I sat in the snow, and the penguin approached me. When a man in the third poorest country in the world was asked why the poor locals seemed so happy, he explained, we may not have it all, but we can choose to be happy, and so we do. And with these words, I proudly choose life. I choose life for the orca and the humpback whales, the chinstrap and gentoo penguins, cormorants, gulls, and terns. I choose a life for the giant petrels, the storm petrels, the finches, Nazca birds, even the sea lions and the marine iguanas. I choose life for the Wyoming bison who passed me on the streets. I choose life for the beer, deer who approached me as we slept in the grass under stars. I choose life for the mass farmed animals mankind slaughters because they choose to consume violence and not peace. I choose life because all around the world, peace is the one thing we all can always use. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Everybody, give it up for Janet and John. And John stands behind the camera and films her. So I felt that was a special performance yeah. with both Janet and John. Thank you, John, as well. Hey, Janet, we love you. You always get on stage. But hey, John, thank you for getting up here tonight. Everybody give it for John, too, please.